greetings guys, welcome back to the Basement Golf Show. What have we got going on this week? Oh, we've got lots and lots going on. Oh my god. That was silly. Damn. <laughs> Cheers, mate. That was fantastic. That was a great idea, Simon. Let's do it again. <laughs> well, we better start with PGA Tour. Well, PGA Tour, European Tour. Who cares? I won. Yes. Give yes. me your money. Yes, I have to put a pound in the pot. DJ was. He didn't want to be there, did he? Uh, I thought he played really, really well. You were, um, yes, really, really you were a fan of his then. So that's so that. It was a bit of a ballsy pick with Mr. KC, but he came through for me. He did come through. 11th, yeah, he played really well. I thought over the weekend we were going to get, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's going to get very profitable. It did, yeah, nearly did, didn't it? For a I little while. I put my own money on him this week as well. Oh, did you? Yeah. Didn't, 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 didn't get paid, did I? No. Mugs game. We <laughs> could have been though. Yeah, it was. Um, oh. not, not everyone's favourite winner. No. And some awkward silence <laughs> and some Pete, controversy. Pete, yeah, Pete Costas might have. Yeah, Pete yeah. Costas is not not a big fan of Mr. Reed and. No lane up podcast. Oh bit yeah, of a plug. it was a good podcast. That. To, to be fair, whatever you think of Patrick Reed and what he's done in the past, he won that tournament. He's a very very good golfer. Yeah, and he really does not care what you think about him. Couldn't care less. And because his bank account is. Yeah. Really. So anyway, on to this week. Yeah. Two events, a treat for us. European Tour. Yes. Come on. It's back. We're going to Oman. Yeah, I like the old Oman Open. Yeah, yeah it's not the, too bad. The sort of the, the Emir I like the way they take it to, to different places. They're, yes. they're not scared of where they take it. No. They're just going to take it everywhere. That, everywhere that wants it. They're everywhere that wants it. Yeah, and there's been some good winners in the past mm. of this tournament. You've got some good players playing. Yeah. Who are you going to go for? I'm going for Mr. Alex Evans, best mate. I'm oh, going for the Biff. Paul Waring. Paul Waring. Very good choice. Very long off, long off the tee. Yeah. Great ball striker. Gets that putt of warm. It's his week. Nice, I like it. I'm also going around about the home nations. Yeah. I'm going for Mr. Paul Dunn, friend of the show. <laughs> sort of. Yeah. Um, yeah. If you, you want to be. If you want to be. <laughs> <laughs> and again, in form in the Vic Open, played nicely in that. Yep. Likes that part of the world, has played well at this time of year in the past. Okay. So I'm trying to justify how wild a pick it is, basically. Yeah. It's not the best pick, but you, you never, never know. You never it's know. golf, isn't it? Uh, PJ Tour. Yeah, so the Honda Classic this week, the start of a run of three really good events. So you've got Honda Classic this week, Arnold Palmer Invitational, and then the players. Yes. So we're in Florida for the the Most duration. of the month. Yes. And you've played this course before? I have, yes. Um, so it's with Palm Beach Gardens in Florida. Uh, managed to play that once and it is tough. Yes. Yeah. So it's, it's a got, bear the, trap, isn't got it? the bear trap around there. So 16, 17, 18, like just a really, really good closing um, few holes there. And some great par threes and a sweeping yes. um, dog leg par five to finish. Yeah. yeah it's really, really good. Really good course. Excellent. So who are you going to go for? JT's winning this. Okay. Yeah, that's yeah. it. Yeah, that's it. He looked uh, good, didn't he? He, he played really, really, really well in Mexico. I think he's sort of pushing some form on, um, sort of iron out a few of those kinks that we saw uh, throughout the weekend. And I think it's his. his he plays. He plays well there. He lives down that way, I believe. So yeah. it's, it's sort of a home from home. I think he'll play well. He looked good this week. It just wasn't quite. It's always windy at PJ National. Is it? Okay, always. Mm. Good. Okay. I'm going Ricky Fowler. Well, he lives there as well. <laughs> he does live there. I want Ricky Fowler to do well again. I want him and Rory to be right up there competing yeah. week in, week out with Justin Thomas, with Brooks Kepka, with DJ when DJ turns up. And yeah, when Ricky Fowler putts well, he just putts everyone else off From the planet. From inside six feet, he looks lucky. He's, He's so solid, isn't he? So, yes. There are picks. There are picks. Comment below. Who are your picks this week? Hit it up. Right. My favourite part of the week. Well, maybe not this week, but my favourite part of the week. Tall v small. 
let's see who wins. Right, good evening guys and welcome back again to another challenge. What are we doing tonight? So again, proximity to hole, but we've gone to 200 yards. Yes. Can you go three in a row? We're about to find out. Well, there's every chance, isn't there? If you haven't seen the 100 and the 150 yard proximity to hole challenge, they're definitely worth a watch. Lots to learn. And we're going to give you an education tonight as well. Cool. No good. doubt. Let's Absolutely. go. Yeah. <laughs> Right, so we've got a pretty nasty flag here before we get started. Yeah, so if you can't quite see it, there's a bunker sat in here and the pin's tucked on that right hand side of the green. So there's loads of room to oh, the left. Yeah, tons. So in a proximity to hold challenge, yeah. if you pitch in the bunker, what happens? It doesn't run out at all, does it? No. So are you aiming this a bit left with a bit of cut? Yeah, so from the look of that complex, I'd be aiming, if this was a competition, I'd be aiming left side trying to cut it. Yeah. From 200 yards, if it cuts too much, I'm not that bothered if it's in the bunker because obviously from back here it's, yeah. it's, it's yeah. in and around the green, it's fine. And again, another interesting point about handicap and how you can play these shots, whereas... Well, we're about to find well, out. Well, yeah, we are about to find out, but whereas Ryan and I would probably struggle more with this. Are you going with four iron? I've got four, well, yeah. Just because it should pitch around about sort of the 190 mark. Yeah. It's not straight, it's carried the bunker though. Oh, yeah. That's a bit heavy. Ooh, Just carried it. Yeah, it's a bit hard on the blade that one. Yeah. Not the best golf shot. So 50 feet from flag feet. on the first one. Ryan, what are you going with? Uh, so, with my handicap level, I don't even think about trying to hit a cup because I just don't have that in my locker. So, my five iron is a sort of a 205-ish sort of distance, but I haven't really been striking it. So, so where are you aiming? I am just left of the edge of the bunker, so okay. I'm sort of looking around, around sort of here, the pin is here, the loop then, yeah. and let's just hope, hope you make contact. I hope I make decent contact. Yes. Oh, you sounded nice. Okay. Put it left edge of the bunker. Okay. Well, I want to go a bit though. Oh, Far enough. Far enough. Good. Did it sound good? Mm. Possibly wrong whacker. 77 feet. feet. What have got, Si? So I've got three hybrid. Yeah. Um, other than my tendency to top these, it should cut, so I'm going to aim it basically at the flag. I was going to say at it. At the flag. If I pull it a little bit, it might go a bit long, so hopefully that will carry the bunker. Perfect. And as much room to the left as it peels away mm. as possible. Striking it well enough, just gone up 
to a four hybrid. Ooh, hello, that is out of heel. And uh, save me, Catch save me, bunker. bunker, save oh, me. Oh dear, that's not you. Oh dear. <laughs> You'll be right. Oh dear. 53, 53 yards. 53 yards. Do some maths, work that out in feet. Okay. You have quite a mental thing in my head with hybrids and fair at the moment. That top feel like that top is there. No, it's just a bit of a breacher. Um, I run I, at, this, at this distance, I'd be definitely thinking of hitting six iron wedge. Chances are we're going to have a shot, aren't they? Right, I have to stuff this with an in close thing. That's better. Mm, bit toasty. Whoa, that freaks me out that angle. Online, get up, get up. That's good. Oh, oh. Yeah, that's good. 50 feet. Just caught the top of the bunker. Yeah, much better, though. That was such a better strike. Mm. And two, the chip and two, two outside chances yeah. from 200 yards. Mm -hmm. Right, just just, the hybrid. just shows how 200 yards right. so important. There you go. Good. Right, right. Oh, you and me then. Yeah, it's, um, it's close for second place. Uh, I'm going to go up the club. Little firewood? Yeah, little firewood. You still seeing that right left shape? Right? Definitely. With this yeah. club. And definitely when I kind of feel like I'm not hitting it 100% full out. Reaching a par four or short par five, 200 yeah. yards out. There we go. If ever there was a prime example of how important second shots are to handicap, 200 yards really highlights it, doesn't it? Yeah, so once you start stretching those yardages out, it's one of those that, from, from my point of view, bottom end of the bag, I'd say you two are probably longer than me. Oh yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I think, yeah, we've got much stronger lofted clubs as well, which helps. Mm -hmm. but, but then going in, going into those those shots there, like I I feel like I had the advantage more mm -hmm. at this distance than I do at a short distance. Yeah, because we're hitting more club into the green, definitely, and it becomes strike becomes so extrapolated out, doesn't mm -hmm. it? Because a poor strike, let's say a poor strike takes ten takes fifteen percent off a shot. Yeah, at hundred yards, that's not the end of the world. At two hundred mm -hmm. yards, it starts really. Magnifying things. Yeah, and yeah. certainly face errors once you're putting that speed through, as we found with the massive left ones we and both hit. Where I find, like, so I know my five iron is about 205 out on the course, but I haven't struck it, so I've gone up one, and, yeah. and then and then I've not struck that too. And, and you're in your I'm, head as well, aren't you? Like, should it be the five iron? Should it be the four hybrid? What what should I be taking? And that makes all the difference. Of course yeah. it does, yeah. And that's a massive lesson for everyone to learn is mm. that, you know, Strike is so important in this game, and you know, for me, where I have to hit that three hybrid, and I hit it really well the mm. second time, and it didn't reach. 
So you've got to learn that on the course, haven't you? And yeah. then go up to the next club, just as you did, in order to make sure you cover the distance. And also, if, in, if anything, this just puts pressure on your practice. So mm. I'm standing there knowing that I've got the advantage, but I've still got to stand there and hit that shot. Mm -hmm. So if you're doing this against your friends, like even if you're just doing it by eye out to a range marker, mm -hmm. stand there, have these competitions, make yourself, put yourself under the pressure that you're going to have on the golf course. Yeah, it's only going to make you better, guys. So, as always, thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed that little series of proximity to the whole challenge. We need to do more of these challenges. Yeah, I'm pretty yeah. good at these. Yeah, I need, a, I need a win one. Should we do one right now? Yeah. Let's go. We're going to put an end to this smug face. We will. Mark my words, next week we're going to wipe that smile off that face. We're gonna do a challenge that I might have a chance of winning. <laughs> Should we play left handed next? Yeah. <laughs> yes, again, but like we said, like we've been saying, as the hole, as you draw further away from the holes, yeah. the handicap differential really starts to pay. And even though we might be hitting Ryan and I less club or the same sort of club, mm. we just haven't got the haven't got the skill at that speed and to hit that precision, precise target. And I think you might be able to hit the odd shot in there. It's just yes. trying to repeat that over and over. Time time. And again, like how many shots are you going to hit from that distance uh, in a round of golf? Yeah. To try and be that accurate, you'd be going centre of the green. You're not trying to flag it at that point. I think, I think you summed it up quite well. It's when you, before you hit your first shot and you said, if I was playing this, I'd be aiming at the middle of the green. And if I came up in the front bunker from 200 yards, you wouldn't be too disappointed. No, you're looking for like, where's the next shot? You're almost like playing a, like a yes. game of like Chess. snooker. Yeah, you're like ready. you're always trying to think of the, the next move and, and where you're going to try and play from next. If you do miss it, which side you're going to miss it, which side's safer, mm. all of these things, especially from that sort of distance. Okay, right now, question of the week. Yes. We have a special guest with us. We do. Who do we have, Adam? This is Marcus. We've known Marcus for a very long time. Yes. And you put a nice little comment down in the comment okay. section for us this week. Yes, I thank did. you very much. What was that regarding? It was regarding gap testing. Okay. Um, and I've never gap tested in my life. I've been playing since I was probably four or five years old. And also rangefinder. I've never used a rangefinder in any time I've played golf. No. Okay. And that's that is definitely a traditional, old school, whatever you want to call it, way of playing the game. Mm -hmm. um, I feel that the game has moved on a little from that. I still think, I, I get what you're saying about feeling shots. Definitely. Um, and I think you would definitely feel lots of shots. Yeah. Certainly more than I think I would feel shots in. Mm -hmm. um, I'm much more of a gung ho, all out, or nothing with my clubs. Yeah. But you know, tell us about your thoughts on gap testing and so, in between clubs yeah. and having a base for a starting point. Yeah. So that's exactly where where I'd go with it. I, I'd want to know what a stock shot is. Yes, it's knowing your maximum miss hit, having an average of that, having that sort of middle point to go from, and being able to feel a distance off of that. Mm. So. You, Without knowing what the top end is, I don't. I wouldn't have that feeling to go. Where do I go from there? Yeah. I'm also in terms of the the range finder thing. I'm. I don't use like a Sky Caddy. Other brands are available, <laughs> um, or anything like that. I find them a little bit confusing, and it's a bit too much faff for me. I just have a laser. I want to know what that is and we've just we were just talking a second ago and I actually think it's part of my routine now. Yeah. I think it is just part like clubs down, have a look, gun it and it's that exact yardage. It's not it's not knowing oh, I don't if it's 152 it doesn't mean that oh I've got a club that goes exactly that distance. It's it's the fact that alright it's 152. Now what else is involved? Uphill, downhill, wind into, wind with. It's being having an, um, that number to work off of, mm. whether you're trying to do that within your swing or taking in the atmosphere and, the, and what's around you a little bit more. Yeah, I think you were me. saying you played at Thetford. Yeah, played, um, played this weekend and one of the people I was playing with had a rangefinder and they showed me it and obviously I haven't used one for many, many years and, and I found that you know, it shook when you put it, put it on the flag and I found that interesting and they were saying to me that exactly what you've just said, 
they need that figure. They need to know that if they hit a four iron or a six iron to that number, then that gives them confidence before they, they even take a shot. Mm -hmm. And I totally understand that. Yeah. And I get that feeling of the confidence when you're standing over the ball. If you feel confident about playing a shot, it's going to help you. You've got yeah. much more chance, haven't you? Executed. Without without a doubt. It's mm. going to help you. And obviously for new people coming into the game, and like you say, technology has gone forward. Mm. And maybe I'm just old, you know, happy to play old school. Mm -hmm. um, the wind was, you know, a Strong. challenge this mm -hmm. weekend, yeah, definitely. and I really enjoyed. I enjoy the challenge of the game. I mm. enjoy every aspect of that, and, and and being able to see the shot and being able to to try and hope that the you know the ball's going to go in the right direction, and and the way that it's going to go mm -hmm. is is the way that I feel, and the way that I feel the shot yeah. is I see the shot first. I try and emulate what I'm what I'm seeing. Okay. Yeah, yeah, perfect. Do you think going forwards that you would have any benefit? in playing on a launch monitor just playing just going oh I'm, can i can i hit this 155 yard can i hit this or well, what can i do if i did this with a forearm what you know rather than maybe the way we would normally do a gap fitting which would be hit full six iron hit full seven iron hit full eight iron hit full nine iron see where the gaps are and then you can feel in between those yeah. gaps yeah. do you think you would benefit from having okay let's have a number in our head how many different ways can you hit that number? Do you think that would help your game? Without a doubt. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, again, I I feel that I, there's, I've got two new wedges. I feel that I'm still trying to learn those two clubs, but they'll probably take me six months to learn those clubs. Mm. Or I could could just gap test them and, and speed say- that, speed, yeah, that speed that process. Speed that process. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So in terms of your numbering through <clears throat> through the bag, mm. you just have a rough idea of, of what that well, is? Again, I'm, I'm, I'm old school. I, I hit a 7 iron 150 yards. Mm. I don't understand these people that hit 100, 170 yards 7 iron. 7 iron 150, 6 iron 160, 5 Go iron... 10 yard gaps, roughly. <laughs> start start, <laughs> going, start, start, start <laughs> leaking. <clears throat> But that's the way that I've always played. My my wedge is a hundred yards. Anything in from that is 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 that's where I start feeling. feeling start feeling the shot. Okay. I think you're almost saying that you you don't even again the gap fitting is only useful if you know how far the distance is in the first place. Yeah. yeah true. And I think if you're not even looking at how far the shot how far the shot is, other than you're, if you're feeling from the start, yeah, you're, you're feeling at the back end of it, yeah, aren't so you? So if, if, it, if it starts with your eyes and, and that shot fits your eye and then mm. you're going to hit it with this particular club, I think that's that's an amazing way. That would be sort of, I know Bubba Watson takes it to the extreme now because obviously mm -hmm. he has a person next to him that tells him exactly how far that flag yeah. is. Yeah, yeah. But that's how he somebody somebody like that would have, would have played growing, growing up. up. Yeah, definitely. He would have just seen that shot, knew what he could get to that point and then just hit and it. And just done it, yeah. And I think if you can do it that way, that you, the golf, your golf game needs an element of that. You need to be able to stand mm. at a yardage and, and every now and then you're going to have to hit it over something that's going to mess those yardages yeah. that you're going to have in, yeah. your, in your mind up. So you do need that element. But you, like for me, I, I would be lost without the other <laughs> the other element. It yeah, would definitely. really, really unsettle me. I think that's it. <laughs> it's being able to have that balance, isn't yeah. it? Does that help? Yeah, also, but there, there was another thing, again, we were talking about, because it was a lengthy round. Um, but we were saying that the people we grew up with, Seve Ballesteros, you know, mm -hmm. all these yeah, yeah. phenomenal players that didn't have this technology. So you learn and you see the way that they see shots and you'd learn these different ways. I'm not saying that and you know I play like Seve, but it's it's about I'm presented with this golf shot and this is how I'm gonna try that and tackle this it. time. Yeah, yeah exactly. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. That. And that's the way that um, you know I'm I'm lucky enough to, to play the game at this moment. But I'd love yeah. to try, you know. Mm. I think that's try. I think that's where we go from here. Yeah. I think it'd be interesting. We we'll, we'll go go to Colford, go somewhere like that where you can actually yeah. see some shots and have your track man to back it up yeah so you can you know the good thing about most of the track man's stuff and the gc2 stuff that we use is you can get uh, we can give you and make you look at it and yeah and, and not without so. actually showing you the number yeah exactly and you can then you can then hit five shots oh yeah i feel that was a bit long feel that was a bit short type thing yeah and then we can see where the. and oh. again i think that would that actually helps your skills doesn't yeah. it yeah you know a lot yeah. of the time we've trying all to call your numbers exactly well trying to call your numbers trying to call 
how many different numbers can you hit with the same club? You know, the old ladder drills and stuff like Definitely. that. Definitely. Brilliant. Thank you for coming on, Mark. No trouble at all. Thanks, Jeff. Thanks for inviting me. So guys, we just want to thank Marcus for popping along to the basement this evening. Yes, so this week's question, what are we going for? So this week's question is going to look more around the WGC event that's just happened. Mm. So do you think that the WGC event should be more included in the, in the season schedule? Should there be more of them? Top six in the world, no cut, everybody battling it out all week? Or do you prefer the traditional PGA Tour and European Tour schedules with yeah. some of the old school events and bits and pieces coming around and especially with the European tour going from country to country mm. every different week. Yes. What so do you prefer guys? What do you like? Do you like to see guaranteed the best players in the world? Or would you like the option of your Paul Duns and your people like that coming through? You know, because they aren't they aren't at the WGC events. No. They're not top six in the world, they've got no chance of winning it. Mm. Is that one of the things you like about golf? that on their day someone can come through and win? Yeah. Or do you like guarantee that when you sit down in front of your TV you are going to watch the best players in the world all the time? Look, like, we want you guys to tell us what you think about it. Maybe we've got it completely wrong. Yeah. Maybe everybody down there just wants to guarantee they're going to see Tiger 18 times a year and DJ in all the top events and, mm. you know. We, we don't know. Let us know. So that just about wraps us up for this week, Adam. I don't think there's anything left to say. Nothing left to say. Just enjoy the European Tour being back. Yes. Love the European Tour. Golf on early mornings. It's always good, isn't it? Yeah. Get up, golf's on, go to work, come home, come PJ home, Tour's PJ on. Come home, PJ Tour's on. Perfect. Bonus. Life returns to normal. <laughs> all right, we'll see you all next week, guys. Thanks, bye-bye. <laughs>